In a prior video, I explained that there is a serious bug in the way of the equation editor in PowerPoint handles summations. I will link to that video in the description. Specifically, the index variable, starting point, and stopping point are usually displayed to the right of the summation sign rather than below it for the index variable and starting point and above it for the stopping point. I showed you how to correct the problem so that you ended up with this, where the summation is shown correctly rather than this, which is the way the PowerPoint equation editor normally displays summations. However, there are two problems with the approach I showed you. The first you can see on the screen. Specifically, the equation is shown below the bullet point rather than beside it. The second point is not so obvious and, in fact, I did not know about this problem when I created the video. You can see it here. Here, the summation is shown on top of the fraction. As you can see, it is not aligned with the bullet point so it has the extra space from the first video. It just does not work. And note, you would have the same problem if the summation were on the bottom of the fraction. There's a solution, as you can see here. These summations are on the top of a fraction and yet they are displayed correctly. Additionally, the equation is beside the bullet point so there is not wasted space above the equation and the bullet point looks correct. It's not perfect. There's too much space between the summation signs and between the second summation sign and the variable. However, it's very close to correct and much better than you can do with the built-in equation editor summation sign. Before I show you how, let me just say that this is a hack I developed myself. I developed it because I needed to incorporate the equation shown on the screen into a professional presentation. This hack requires nothing but PowerPoint. Let's switch to PowerPoint and I will show you how it's done. I will start by showing you how to develop a simple summation equation using the hack. Once you see that, you will know how it works and you can implement it for more complicated summations. Once I've shown you the hack, I will then show you how to build the equation we saw earlier. To begin with, we will not be using the built-in summation function at all, so I need to insert a summation symbol into the presentation. I do this by clicking on Insert and then Symbol. This brings up the Symbol dialog box. Once I've located the summation symbol, I click on it and then click on the Insert button. I then click on the Close button. Next, I need to highlight the summation sign and cut it into the paste buffer. I will not need the symbol in the presentation itself, so cutting, rather than copying, gets it into the paste buffer and removes it from the presentation. I am now ready to build the equation. This is a very basic equation. I will place our simple ABC summation in the top. My next step is to insert a matrix with two columns and three rows. The first column is used for the starting and stopping points and the summation sign. The second column is used for the equation, but only one of the three spots is used. Let's enter those values. The A and B are entered just as you would expect. The summation sign is entered by pasting rather than using the equation editor's built-in summation function. The C is entered in the center box of the second column, and there you have the finished equation. The columns are too far apart and PowerPoint does not let you adjust that, but this is the best you can get with the correct placement for A and B. Now, you may be wondering why I did not use the built-in summation tool. Here you see a PowerPoint equation where I've used a matrix with one column of three squares and the built-in summation function was used in the center square. As you can see, the A and B are not exactly over the summation sign. As you can see here, the problem with A and B gets worse as the equation gets more and more complex. PowerPoint centers the content of the three vertical squares, so the A and B move further away from the summation sign the more complex the equation gets. That does not happen when I use the matrix approach with two vertical columns and ignore the built-in summation function. I should note that you can see the empty matrix placeholders here, but they do not show up when you present. And, if they bother you, PowerPoint lets you hide empty placeholders by right-clicking on the equation, selecting Math Options, and then Hide Placeholders. Now we will build the more complex equation I showed you earlier. First, I'll add the x bar bar, the fraction, and then the n sub t since you should already know how to do this. I have two summations, so I'll need three columns. One for the first summation, one for the second summation, and one for the equation itself. Once I have the matrix set up, I just enter the appropriate information into each square. Again, I only use the center placeholder on the third column.
And there you have the finished equation. As I said at the start, it's not perfect, but it is much, much better than PowerPoint itself can do with the built-in summation function. And this approach works no matter where the summation sign is used.